Well, Afghanistan's neighbors, um, particularly Iran and Pakistan, have been closely involved in, in the country for decades now. Um, and that involvement has often been very damaging, I think, to stability within Afghanistan. What you've seen most recently has been um, both Iran and Pakistan pouring money into their own proxies within the country. Um, and in some cases, uh, in the case of Pakistan, undermining stability by supporting the Taliban, supporting the Haqqani network, uh, supporting these jihadi groups that have been involved in violence in Afghanistan for the past decade. Um, that's been an extremely sort of problematic approach by Pakistan. Pakistan's main anxiety is that uh, India will have an excessive influence there and that there'll be a government that's essentially opposed to Pakistan. That's how it's seen the Karzai government for the past 10 years, and that's why it's backed its opponents. It's going to be very hard to move that mindset or to change that mindset in the Pakistani military. They really do believe that, um, that Karzai is far too close to India. And that's been uh, exacerbated recently by the signing of an agreement between Afghanistan and India, a sort of strategic framework agreement. Um, ahead of 2014, there are a number of things that the surrounding countries could do to boost uh, some sense of security for Afghanistan. One is to, uh, to agree on Afghanistan's neutrality. Uh, one is to build up confidence through trade and, and uh, by building up uh, transport links through the region. But these are, are difficult things to achieve in a short period, and it's unlikely that uh, uh, signatures on pieces of paper are necessarily going to be upheld by these countries. They all have very powerful interests in Afghanistan. They're very reluctant to let those interests go, and they're very reluctant to see anyone else sort of prosper at their expense within Afghanistan. So the competition there is fairly fierce and it's not going away anytime soon. Many of the programs that the West has uh, inv invested in Afghanistan I think will fall by the wayside uh, due to a lack of funding but also due to a lack of enthusiasm on the part of the Afghan government and, and others for them. A great many of them have been quite poorly designed. They've often been much more about the agendas of aid agencies and governments than they have been about uh, the needs of the Afghan people. So we are going to see a, a major economic fall off in 2014, uh, which is a very dangerous proposition, plunging the, uh, the economy essentially into recession, uh, just at the same time that the main guarantors of security pull out of the country. So I think 2014 is going to be a very difficult year for Afghanistan. Before 2014, there is a huge need to strengthen some state institutions, and by that I mean particularly parliament and the judiciary, the uh, balancing institutions to this very centralized presidency that was set up under the recent constitution. Um, that presidency hasn't functioned well. Uh, Karzai has not proved to be an able administrator of the country. He really hasn't delivered on, on a great deal of uh, benefits to the Afghan people. What is needed is a greater sense of, in, of political inclusion, and that can only really come through Parliament. There's also a need for a greater sense of fairness, and that really needs to come through an improved uh, justice system, an improved rule of law. But these are long-term projects. They're very difficult to achieve. They're certainly not going to be uh, really uh, cha um, changed that much in the next two years. Afghanistan after 2014 is going to uh, you know, end up in a very sort of slow and steady decline into uh, greater violence. I think it's very unlikely that uh, security is going to be sustained. I think it's going to see uh, uh, a rise in ethnic tensions and ethnic conflict. I think you're going to see serious splits between the north and the south. You're likely to see an increase in violence in Kabul. Kabul has always been the prize for uh, you know, various groups in Afghanistan, and I think there will be serious competition over the capital. I think you're going to see a major uh, exodus of the well-educated, the wealthy, the middle class, anyone who can actually afford to get out. And unfortunately, it will be the poor and the vulnerable who get left behind to, uh, to see the sort of fighting that you might see. But I do think uh, the prospects for a solid peace after 2014 are, are very slim at the moment. Well, I think the legacy of a, of a decade of involvement in, in Afghanistan by the United States is really one of uh, missed opportunities. I think the, uh, the lack of uh, investment in issues like the rule of law um, and uh, developing an effective democracy early on 
uh, has meant that these things just haven't uh, taken root at all. It's a very complex picture in many ways, but uh, the United States didn't uh, play its role early on. Instead of actually uh, going along with this huge desire in 2001 among Afghans to see a real change in their country, they brought back warlords, they brought back the sort of purveyors of violence who'd caused so many problems in the previous decade. They didn't really build uh, an effective democracy. They put too much power in the hands of Karzai, who was ill-equipped you know, personally and politically to handle that power. Um, they've uh, made a whole series of very grave errors over the past decade. And unfortunately, the legacy of that for Afghanistan is likely to be more violence.